Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you here this morning to May the 22nd of the year of our Lord, 2022. We gather together here this morning to worship and to praise, give glory and honor to our Lord and Savior and our soon coming King. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. By way of announcements, of course, uh, today at uh, 3 p.m. up at the First Baptist Church in Milton will be the Northumberland Baptist Association meeting that takes place at 3 o'clock. Also, next week, uh, next week, which is Memorial Day weekend, the 29th, uh, we won't be holding services because uh, a lot of us, the piano player, will be gone, and so many other folks won't be here. Made arrangements with the, the Methodist Church next door. If you wish to come and worship, they will be more than willing to uh, welcome you into the congregation for that day. So, no services next week, uh, 1030 at the Methodist Church, uh, if you wish to worship. Uh, Vaughn said, it's a time for you to fly, and then when you come back, come back with different ideas. I think that's the way it was. Or something, like, something like that. Something like that. So no, no regular services next week, uh, but, uh, the following week, yes. Oh, and speaking of the following week, the church in and of itself, the, the church and the Sunday school, will begin to take on a different uh, metamorphosis as we begin to change this particular area here into a seagoing vessel, and there will be pirates and all kinds of stuff that's going to be happening as we up towards vacation Bible school. So uh, you may see a mask with a, with a lookout and some sheets hanging up here for sales. And, uh, and, uh, uh, even a small deck cannon. Yeah. Will be, uh, so hopefully not firing, but I haven't figured that out far out yet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, it's exciting. Hope you're praying for a harvest of young hearts and older hearts to come to Vacation Bible School. And with that, while we're at that, Susan, do you have something that you'd like to add as far as uh, tomorrow night at 6.30 will be a Vacation Bible School meeting. So if you wish to come here and uh, help with those preparations, uh, you're welcome. Was it 6.30? Yeah, we're going to do it at 6.30. Okay. She needs to make this a, a success, not for our part, but onto the Lord. Amen. Tomorrow evening, also at 6 30, at Country Comfort, we'll be scrapbooking. And also, starting tonight and running through Thursday at 6 p.m. at the uh, Church of New Life in, in Forest Hill, will be revival services. Uh, I get the opportunity to speak on Wednesday night. They start at 6 p.m. and they're usually over at 7. So, revival at Forest Hill. Also, up and coming, uh, oh, before we move any further, the Expectations Walk and Run yesterday for Expectations and their ministry, uh, as of last evening, they, they netted $17,000. So, what a, a praise that is. And we, I was speaking with uh, one of the individuals, and we were talking about the, the blight of abortion that's been on this nation and uh, for over, well, for 50 years, since 1973. And she was at a meeting, she said, we were talking amongst some folks, and, and somebody brought up that every 50 years in the Jewish calendar, that 50th year was called the year of Jubilee. Uh -huh. So maybe, after 50 years, we'll have a year of jubilee and get rid of that that has cost the life of 65 million babies. Hard to fathom. Hard to fathom. So, 
praise God for their ministry as it continues on and the challenges that they meet on a daily basis as they indeed share the gospel with those who are in need. Also coming up on June the 19th will be the uh, July-August newsletters. Uh, June the 24th and 25th is the American Baptist Women's Meet Ministries at uh, Altoona. And of course the ongoing ministries that we have here as it regards uh, wise cards and things of that nature. It's listed there in your, in your uh, boat. Any other announcements? Seeing none, let's turn our attention then to uh, the reason that we've assembled here this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come to you. We invite you to your presence, which we know you were already here. We would ask that the Holy Spirit, your power, would indwell and fill us this morning. Fill us, feed us, and Lord, we would just ask it. Every word that is said, every song that is sung, brings glory to you. Lord, you are worthy of our praise because you are our sovereign God, creator of the entire universe and all this there. God, you were always there. And you will always be there. And Lord, we celebrate those moments when we can come to you. And Lord, we just thank you for the safety that you have provided for each and every one here this morning. And Lord, we just give you that glory because it's rightfully yours. It has nothing to do with us because you paid the price for our redemption. And Lord, we thank you. And we pray all of these things in the majestic, powerful name, the name that is above all names, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I will sing the dogs off to you. I will not worship their gods. You, Lord, are all I have. And you give me all I need. My life is in your hands. How wonderful are your gifts to me. How good they are. I praise the Lord because he guides me. And in night my conscience warns me. I am always aware of the Lord's presence. He is near and nothing can shake me. And so I am full of happiness and joy. And I always feel secure. Because you will not allow me to go down to the world of the dead. You will not abandon to the depths below the one you love. You show me the paths that lead to life. Your presence fills me with joy. And your help brings pleasure forever. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated. He has a song here for the. Oh, is that first? Hmm? Is that first? Oh, excuse me. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> That's okay. I'm always behind, so. <laughs> what I'm not going to comment on that one. <laughs> okay, the first hymn that we have this morning is a 100. 
68. Tell me the story of Jesus.
John. Praise God. You know, those are the attributes that we should be doing. We should be you know, happy in the Noah. Because we know that the, what this world has to offer is not our home. It's heaven bound. We're just passing through. All right. Our next hymn this morning is number 580. Who is on the Lord's side? Question. Who is on the Lord's side? Number 580. <laughs>
and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name of all to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. May the Lord add his blessing. Praise God. Thank you for that. If you remember from last week's message that we talked about in the book of Hebrews where we were where the Apostle Paul who I believe wrote the, the book of Hebrews and we expressed that last week that he was surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses now how many of you know what Thursday is? Thursday is 40 days past Easter or Resurrection it's Ascension Day. It's 40 days that the Lord had resurrected from his resurrection. He was here those 40 days. He was witnessed by more than 500 people at one time, plus the apostles, plus others, that validated that he had indeed risen from the dead. Praise God. But for those 40 days, he began to teach and to deliver as he had did before. And each of the four Gospels bring out some of the, the teachings that Jesus did prior to his ascension. And most of them we know all too well. They're usually called the Great Commission uh, or the the challenges of, of reaching out to others. You see, when, when Jesus ascended that day outside of Bethany, he left to his disciples. He left to you and I as believers in Jesus Christ. He left to you and I, the body of Christ, the most sacred privilege on the face of the earth. And that is to share the gospel, the good news, wherever we go. Because what this world has to offer is far comes up short when it compares to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, I mean, I've stated numerous times, you know, in conversation, I say, hey, I'm independently wealthy. People look at you, you are. Yeah, my father owns it all. <laughs> of course, then that leads into an opportunity to be able to share. But each of the four Gospels gives us some insight as to what Jesus wanted his disciples and he wanted you and I to be a part of. And sometimes it's called the Great Commission. In, in Luke, excuse me, in Matthew, Matthew 28, we see that now, Jesus there tells us to go therefore and, and make disciples to all the nations, baptizing them. And then Jesus says, that I have commanded you. Whoa. He has commanded us to do so. And that command has never been rescinded. Then in, in Mark, where he says, you know, in Mark chapter 16, he says, uh, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Uh, sometimes we think of creatures as being animals, but everything that God created, or God cre or creation that God, we have to recognize the audiences that the gospel is being shared with. Of course, with Matthew, it was geared towards the 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 Hebrews. Mark wrote his letter to the Romans. And of course, Dr. Luke, which we are joy to read a portion of here this morning, was addressed to the Greek world. And John, his gospel was to the remainder of those who love the Lord. Of course, John, there at the very end of John and John 21, we have where Jesus challenged Peter to uh, do you love me? We recall that story three times. Jesus asked Peter, you know, and of course, feed my sheep 
is the response from Jesus. He says, feed my sheep again. In other words, he's telling Peter and the other ones who were there, feed my sheep. In other words, nourish them. Not so much as, as in, in physical food, but give them the food, the manna from heaven, that grand and glorious gospel. Feed them. Feed my sheep. Teach them. Preach to them. Reach out to them. And he says, to watch them grow. To watch them become mature. And then at the very last, Peter says, you know I love you. Feed my lambs. In other words, the little ones. Make sure that they're brought up right. Make sure that they're fed the nourishment, that they're able then to grow into more sheep. Because Jesus, our Lord, declared himself as the great shepherd. And we are the sheep of his flock. But here, Luke says, and each of those that, and he said unto them, it is written, what's written? And here, we have Dr. Luke writing this in, in, the, in the second person. We see that there at the very beginning of Luke, it's verse 1 through 3, says, And as much as you have taken in hand and set in order a, a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers, of the word that was delivered to us. You see, Dr. Luke is writing to his friend, most excellent Theobos, the truth. You know, there was, at that particular time period, there was individuals that were, were writing stories about Jesus, and some of them were fictitious, some of them were embellished. You know, like the early dime novels from the Western movie, from the Western movies, you know, they wrote all about Billy the Kid and Kit Carson and Bill Cody, you know, they would expand upon things that they never done. The same was true with those individuals who wrote stories about Jesus. Then it was up to the, the 70, the LXX, the Septuagint, that were able to discern that which is, was true and which was not. But here, The apostle, well, the apostle Luke, Dr. Luke writes that the repentance and remission should be preached in his name, in his name, among the nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Preached in his name. You know, God has no other means of salvation, no other name but Jesus. That sounds like a song. God's method of salvation has never changed. From the dawning of time, God's plan of salvation was to send Jesus Christ to this world. If there's, there's three words, and if, there's, if you don't take anything else from this, away from this morning's message, I'll take these three words away, because, you know, unto, for, and with. Those three words describe the God's message unto. We read the, the gospel, the narrative in Luke, where Luke chapter 2, where we read it at Christmas time. And what's it say? For unto you, unto you, the angels were declaring is born in the city of David a Savior. Jesus born unto his own. And of course you know later on in life, some 30 years later, 33 years later, he was rejected by his own. But he came unto his own. God sent his son unto his creation, you and I. Why? That 
they might, that Jesus might die for our sins. 1 John 2 and 2 says, And he himself is the propitiation for our sins. That's a, that's a two dollar word. Propitiation. It means instead of. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins and not only ours but also the whole world. Jesus died for the sins of the entire world. Jesus was a witness. And we are witnesses. Jesus was a witness of the power of God. He manifested himself as God, which he is. And I don't like to use it in the past tense because he is still God. He died for our sins, my sins, your sins, the sins of the entire world. So he came onto his own. He died for our sins. And he's coming back with his saints. For those who believe, he's coming back with the saints. Revelation 19, 11 through 14 says this, Now I saw heaven. This is written by John. John the Revelator, who on the Isle of Patmos, was given to him a, the, re, the revelation of what's to come. And these come from the Lord Jesus himself. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man except himself. He was clothed with the robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies of the heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on horses. White horses. Talking about the second coming, when Jesus there will put, his, put an end to all the atrocities at that particular time. The battle of the dog and Magog. When all these individuals throughout the new world who think they're so high and mighty, God will put them in his place. He's coming back with his saints. So God came on to, Jesus came on to the world for our sins, and he's coming back with us. Luke then writes, you are witnesses of these things. Eyewitness. Have you ever been called into court to be an eyewitness? Or to give testimony of, of something? No, I know I have. You know. What you're called to do there is you're called to give an account of what you saw. Or if you were the actual accuser, what you've done. You're going to give a true and accurate account of what you saw, what you witnessed. And here, the apostle here writes, you and you are witnesses of all these things. That's the title. You're witnesses of what God has done in your lives. Now, there'll be the skeptics that say, well, I, there's no eyewitnesses today that saw Jesus. Well, that's true. There's no eyewitnesses from the battle at Gettysburg either. But you can go there and see the effects of what took place there. The same way that you can be eyewitnesses of how you see a heart that's so hardened by sin that becomes grand and gloriously saved. You, can, you may be able to give testimony of that being you. We are witnesses. We are called to proclaim that which we know is the truth found in Christ Jesus and his, we can, we've 
got no other recourse but to proclaim it. That's why these individuals that God gave called the four gospels, the great commissions, sometimes we sort of back off on that. We have individuals, like I've mentioned, that will deny that there is even, even is a God. And the other day in the paper, there was a, an article written by an individual that, that proclaimed that, you know, we all, a little poem that said that we all pray to the same God. Whether it be, you know, Hindu, whatever ism or religion or philosophy, when you pay homage to it, you're, you're, you're praying to the same God. Well, that's a big false statement. My God doesn't go around and say you kill people for because they don't believe in what you believe in. You know, dealing with false gods and false prophets are nothing new. You remember Elijah back there in 1 Kings? when he was challenged by the 450 uh, prophets of Baal. And Elijah said, well, you call, whoever calls down fire, that's the God that we'll believe in. The 450, uh, 450 prophets of, of Baal, they were shouting and screaming and cutting themselves and crying out. And of course, Elijah was, was taunting them a little bit. Well, shout a little louder. Maybe, maybe your God can't hear you. Or, you know, maybe, maybe your God's out to lunch, wouldn't it? You know, maybe he's on vacation. He took a sabbatical. Maybe that's the reason that he's not bringing down fire. But then Elijah, oh boy, says unto the, praise unto the Lord. Lord, send down fire that these people might believe. And he did. That altar was consumed by fire. See, God moved miraculously that day to prove to those individuals who God is. It's not a God made of wood, stone, or folded up and put in your wallet. It's not a particular political head or president or heads of state or a king or whichever. God is all powerful. And it's God that we give witness and testimony of. My folks will say, well, gee, I don't know what to do. You know, I can't say. You've got a story to tell. Your conversion story is miraculously is just as the, the hardcore addict. You may be sitting at home or sitting in the church, you know, that you I've never, you know, I've been coming to this church since I was a little children, a little child myself. But if you've never given your heart to the Lord, you're just as, you, know, you might be able to sing all the psalms, know all the all the, uh, some of the Bible verses, but if you've never said yes to Jesus Christ, you're just lost. You're lost. And how many of us today, that, as we look around, as our ambassadors, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago in Sunday school, you know, that we're called to be ambassadors, we're called to be witnesses, we're called to be representatives of the Most High God and His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's amazing as we look around how the world has rejected God's Word and we see the evidence of that. I borrowed something from an individual that I heard probably 15, 20 years ago. And I know I've said it before, but it bears evident that we need to hear it again. Maybe there's somebody new here this morning that's listening that needs to hear these words. 
any civilization or nation that rejects the, the gospel of Jesus Christ accelerates immorality, perversionness, and incest, and attacks the most precious, the innocent of life. That was probably 20 years ago. How it applies today. We need to be witnesses. We are called to be witnesses. We are called to proclaim the truth. We are called to, to share. We have an opportunity to cast our bread upon the waters, to throw out the net into the community with vacation Bible school. There's little ones out there and some big ones that need to hear the gospel. Some of these individuals we might not even like. But they need Jesus too. And we as witnesses are commanded to give it to them. Whether we like them or not, or how bad they smell, or whatever, you know. There was a new pastor who was called to a church. And the congregation was, you know, they had this big reception planned. He was supposed to preach the, the first day of his, in this new congregation. The church was full. Everybody was waiting for the new minister, the new preacher to come. And lo and behold, prior to the service starting, a big, a big draggled old man walked in, old clothes, smelling and came and sat in the front pew and that congregation was in awe looked at this individual no one approached him. no one offered him a bulletin as time went on the individual was shadowy dress, took off his coat, took off his hat, and it was the new minister. And he said, we have work to do. Uh -huh. We have work to do, church. We're called to do it. Let's get out there. And let's get behind this vacation Bible school. There's hearts that need to be tenderized from all the filth and junk that's out there. Is there anybody that you don't want to see in heaven with you? Mm -hmm. Praise God. Let's turn now to our final hymn. You see, nobody ever cared for us like Jesus. Number 600. No one ever cared for me like Jesus.
nations. No color, no culture, or civilization. No civilized civilization barriers. One Savior, one gospel. Lord, we would just ask that you would be with us now as we go to the mission field that's beyond these walls. Wherever it is you place us this up and coming week, Lord, put someone in our path to share the gospel with. Because we would like to hear a new name written down in glory for you. Lord, we just thank you for all the many blessings that you continue to shower us with as individuals and also as a nation. Watch over us and keep us until we see your blessed face. Thank you.